Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. I've got uh, my laptop up here and I'm going through the videos that uh, Rick and I made. I thought I'd just maybe explain a little bit about, you know, what I was doing. And also maybe we'll, we'll see if we can steal some riffs from uh, Rick. There's lots of things that sound great on guitar that you just can't do on piano. And there's lots of things that sound great on piano that you just can't do on guitar. But there is some things that are going to sound good uh, on either instrument. And, you know, you can certainly broaden your style a little bit by not just listening just to piano players and copying their ideas, but, you know, copying things from other instruments as well. So. Like that little, that little turnaround right there was pretty cool. Let me, what the heck did he do there? What did he do? Yeah, that's something I just wouldn't have think of doing. I go, you know, because that that note doesn't seem right to me. But you know, when he plays it, it sounds just great. Well, check that out. Pretty, pretty easy stuff. It, you know, instead of an E chord, it's like got the sixth in there. And then just by changing one note. Okay. And I think I've, I've talked about this before, but, you know, the most common way now of playing the, the first line of a blues is to do the one chord for just one measure and then go to the four chord for one measure and back to the one chord for two more measures and that that's four measures all together that's the first line of the blues so i think just about every blues we play here is going to be like that is that what it is on these videos, you or me. I think we're both getting something out of this. Yeah, and right there, you know, Rick just plays it like a blues line while I do the turnaround. I did this. And he's just playing blues right over the top of that. And that always just sounds great. You know, even if you're doing like this turnaround. I'll try to do it with one hand like this. See, and then I'll play a blues line over it. You know, and it's always going to sound good. When the turnaround comes, ar comes along, not everybody in the band has to play it. You can just solo right over top of it, and it sounds great. All uh, right, what's that little thing? <laughs> All right, that's just so cool. It's very important to uh, listen to the blues and you don't have to sit there and figure out everything that you hear, but you know, once it gets into your ears, um, you know, sometimes you have to really, you know, sit down and figure it out, you know, and use your ears and try to figure out what's going on. Uh, but it, just listening to it, it'll it'll help you come up with those ideas on your own. All right, so you know, he took that that it's like an E six chord, right? It's got the E with a six there, and that's going to sound good. You know, against that seventh down there, it gives you that dissonance. And he's going. All right, there's A seventh and up to the ninth there. So it's very cool.
Let's see what he does with it. does it stays on E there uh, when you have stop time blues you can you can you know do it the old way just stay on E and then you know once you get to the second line you the rhythm comes back in again or you know if you do the stop time you can use the four chord too you can go and then change it to and then back to E all right let's see what else we can pick up from Rick here talked about this before he's going it's like if you if you use two notes as a triplet like but here he's you know he's, he's uh, doing that one and then these two notes and you could probably do the something like that getting such good stuff out of here out of this today and this is what I mean about coming up with your own ideas I, uh, this this student has come up do it again will you please <laughs> that was a great idea you took a simple idea made it your own go so uh, good way to end the blues here I think it's good because it kind of lets everybody in the band know that and the audience as well that the end is coming so Rick says take it down low and he goes oh. and it's just pretty simple I put in a few little things like that and then kind of leads you to the ending when you hear it get loud there on the last line da, 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 da. and the melody comes back in yeah it feels like an ending so uh all right thank you rick and you know i've got how many more minutes do i have here oh and i've got practically uh i don't know 45 50 more minutes of stuff oh yeah in the next segment uh rick teaches me a blues which i, I seem to have a little difficult uh, a, a difficult time learning but this is a blues that actually starts on the four chord and you know that's just a variation on the form uh, so all these blues I think are, are 12 bar blues that I did with Rick but we'll be covering lots of these different forms of the blues we're gonna have a lot of fun doing it yes we are